Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones and the gemstone world, don't you forget. And most critical among those things for most of us is actually a loop. So today I want to tell you a little bit about my new favorite, what I like to call combat loop. Now I call it a combat loop because it is useful, especially in everyday situations. It is small enough that it fits in my pocket without making me uncomfortable, which means I carry it around more and have it on hand when I need it. And it's pretty much indestructible because this one is actually made of plastic. The lens I believe is not, but it's a super lightweight loop. And it has a small profile. How small you say? Well, this is the other loop that I like very, very much. I've even engraved it. How fantastic. But if you look at the side profile of both of these loops, this one, my new combat loop, is actually almost half the size of the Rubin and Sons hexagon. When this is in your pocket, you know, it's also substantially heftier. Now that's not necessarily a problem. In fact, there are many advantages to this loop, the Rubin and Sons hexagon. If you're somewhere that you could just put it on an office table, or if you're carrying around a bag all the time, that's great. But this just living in my pocket, I can just fish it out whenever I need it. The optics are quite good, it's inexpensive, and the outer casing is plastic. So for my ease of use and general comfort, this is my go-to everyday loop now. I have another one that's a similar size, but it's made out of mostly steel. If it's on a lanyard around your neck, it's swinging around and I'm always worried about it running into somebody's display case. And that's a frightening thing. You don't need extra nerves when you're going around gemstones. There's plenty. You ever drop a gemstone? You get the cold sweats. Unlike Thailand here, we've got the hot sweats. So. This is my new favorite combat loop, and it is the Zeiss D40. Now, I love it for many reasons that I've just told you, but it probably really comes down to the fact that it was a good friend of mine that gave it to me for my birthday. Now it's extra special. Now, Zeiss does have another very similar loop that is a larger viewing window, but then you're going to have very similar properties with the Rubin and Sons. Larger viewing window, in order to keep the optics and the angles correct, it's going to be a thicker body, which means it's not going to sit in your pocket in a way that feels more or less invisible. So aside from talking about my new favorite combat loop, the Zeiss D40, I would also like to tell you about some of the techniques and thoughts I've had about loops recently. Because this is a very popular video that I've had. I've got two videos about loops on my channel, but I realized that I didn't really touch on some of the advanced things that I've been learning as I've been constantly using my loop while I'm studying gem cutting. If you want to be a person that deals with gems on a regular basis, you need to be very comfortable with your loop because you're going to be using it a lot. 10x magnification is going to show you many things that your eye will not perceive without it. And it will also train your eye to perceive things without magnification. Once you've seen them up close and personal, they catch your eye a lot more readily. So whether you're cutting gems or you're just buying gems in the future, training yourself with the 10x loop will help you to notice quality, whether that's in cutting perfection or in inclusions. So this is my favorite combat loop, but I still enjoy a large viewing window when I'm doing something like cutting. So some of the techniques and characteristics that I would like you to think about when you're using your loop are how you hold the loop relative to the object that you're observing. Enough science speak, Peter. So if I reach back here and grab my fastening hand piece, when I am cutting a gemstone, if you want to cut accurately, so you want to make your meat points actually meet, as I'm going back and forth between my loop and my stone and my loop and my stone and inspecting with my eye, cutting a little bit, coming back and inspecting. One of the major problems that I have is if I'm doing it often and my eyes get tired, and I'm even tired because I'm cutting well into the night, is that sometimes the plane of the loop and the object I'm looking at are out of alignment. And because you're using higher magnification, the depth of field actually gets thinner. That's true whether you're talking about a camera or a loop, anything with a lens. The stronger the magnification, the thinner your depth of field. So it's important to make sure that your eye and your loop line up at a 90 degree angle, but then that the object that you're looking at, that plane, that surface, is focused in at a parallel line, or at least pretty close to it. That way it's inside of that plane of focus. Otherwise you're gonna be struggling and your eyes are gonna get tired more quickly. The other important tip that I would like to give you is think about how you are using your extra fingers to gauge distance between you and your object because there is a specific distance between the loop and the object that will focus clearly. If you're hunting around and trying to find that distance, it's going to make your neck a lot more tight, which Lord, I know what I need another massage. Got some cracks and some crunches. But also it's gonna reduce the amount of time it takes for you to get into focus. 
So the way you hold your loop will help determine a lot of those things. I like to put my thumb on the back side so that I can put it against my cheek and that leaves these fingers free. These fingers I can then use to brace against the object that I'm going to be focusing on. I like to use my pinky, you can use whatever you want, but that helps guarantee the distance between what I'm looking at so I don't have to hunt as much. Once your muscle memory kicks in, it's gonna be easy, you won't even think about it. So if you would like to make your life easier and also make yourself look a lot more pro in front of people that are trying to sell you gemstones and therefore may or may not try and mess with the price, then I suggest getting very comfortable with a loop that you love, maybe a combat loop that lives in your pocket, if you would like to contact me directly, you can head over to thegemshepherd.com where you can also read blogs about investing in gemstones. Otherwise, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to all of your friends about me, and until next time, bye bye